My name is Nick Higgins. I'm the Chief Librarian of Brooklyn Public Library. Really good to be together with you in, in person today. Um, I'll say that a, a few years ago, I was having a conversation with a colleague and editor at the nonprofit news site, The City, about how information flows through a community, what information is the most trusted, and how people access that. And we started to talk about uh, strong local information ecosystems during Hurricane Sandy and talked about uh, Red Hook in particular. In Red Hook, the official news and information and even aid took days to get into uh, the community after the, the crisis. But in the meantime, local residents were already sharing information on how to get food and water, how to stay warm and be safe, and how to reach out to people to get help. And they were doing this person to person uh, while they were knocking on doors, checking in on their neighbors, and in bulletin boards that sprung up at community organizations across the neighborhood. And it was this local information network that helped people get through the worst of the storm and its aftermath. Now, the, the challenge was how do you sustain this level of reliable information flow um, and support local efforts to create it and um, disseminate it themselves over the long term? So BPL and the city news site, uh, we launched what we called open newsrooms at the Marcy, Red Hook, and New Lots branches. And through a series of... Um, Town halls, we brought together residents with reporters and journalism students to talk about how information moves locally, what sources are trusted, uh, what issues are important to those neighborhoods, and uh, importantly, how, how the press oftentimes gets it wrong when <laughs> covering uh, local communities. And we surfaced a lot of issues that impact these neighborhoods uh, directly, and we even built some trust among residents and um, uh, reporters. But we now need to take an important next step. We need to give people the skills to build and sustain strong local um, information ecosystems themselves. And we envision a revitalization of local news taking root in our neighborhood libraries. And we propose uh, establishing um, uh, working community-operated uh, library newsrooms in six of our library branches that will support a three-year training program for the community to build and grow these newsrooms in uh, flexible meeting spaces that uh, flexible meeting spaces <laughs> that will host large gatherings, um, uh, recording equipment and laptops to be loaned out to trained community journalists, um, uh, production studios built into our branches, and a residency program for uh, reporters to be embedded in the neighborhoods that they cover. Now, the uh, community-generated um, news media that comes out of these newsrooms could be anything from a newsletter to a, to a broadsheet or a website or a podcast, but residents will be able to tell their own stories in the ways that they want to tell them. Uh, I'll end with, with this. Um, I know I'm going on a little bit long, but as we're emerging from another crisis, at least I hope we're emerging from a crisis, uh, the impacts of disinformation and misinformation are all around us. Like we, we're being conditioned to accept sensationalism as, as fact and as uh, polarization and partisanship as legitimate forms of democratic engagement and civic life as a, this enduring contest between us and them. And this skews our understanding of local identity and need and impacts everything from investment to policy to support interventions, particularly in vulnerable communities. And we need to push back on that. <laughs> so we need to have some investment in uh, community-led information curation and local news production. Thanks. Great to chat with you. Nice to see you. Yeah.